Hey, all. Hello again. Once again, you are up front with Frank Rothstein on Skies, Crescent Radio.com. S-K-Y-E-S, Crescent Radio.com. I'm guessing you can spell radio, so we'll leave it at that. But we're broadcasting to you live from New York City, sitting with me on the other end, either floating around in orbit or in her secret hideaway studio is, of course, the woman from Texas, Jade Zabrick. Um, things are going on with Jade and all, and don't forget to keep up with her and her band and her radio station at skiescrescentradio.com. Get her band at train, the trainwalkers.com. And please make a note because the trainwalkers are starting their steady residency at Arlene's Grocery, 95 Stanton Street, starting October 1st or this Sunday. Uh, the show is at what time? Seven? Seven o'clock. Perfect. And we do have a lot going on. Oh, before I forget, also, you can always find us. We are live on Facebook. So if you'd like to turn on your phone or turn on your computer, we are on the Skies Crescent radio page. Of course, the Upfront with Frank Roth Steam radio page. And that's nice and easy. And, you know, I have my cell phone on and my email going. If you'd like to ask me a question along the way, it's upfrontfrank at gmail.com. Upfrontfrank at gmail.com. That is a lot of information. It took up half the show to do it. Um, moving along, a lot going on in the world. Um, interest, I saw a little while ago on the news. Many of you do not know who John Hinckley Jr. is. John Hinckley, uh, 40 years ago, shot, attempted assassination of then President Ronald Reagan. And of course, he was sentenced. But now, all these years later, this guy has won outright release, unconditional release from prison. Um, I'm not sure if unconditional means simply no parole, you can go on your way, or if there's something afterwards that goes along with the condition of unconditional release. But somehow, this guy got out of prison after trying to kill a president of the United States. Well, there you go. What else is going on? If you haven't been keeping up with the news today, wait, let me, volume, volume, volume. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but on my computer, sometimes you go to a a website and their automatic videos start automatically playing. So I don't know if you were able to hear that. Or not. If you did, sorry. Anyway, if you're not looking at the news today, I'll let you know just a couple of hours ago, R. Kelly has been convicted of se in a sex trafficking trial. So far, we're, as far as I know, there are nine counts he's been convicted on, including eight counts of the Man Act. The Man Act, I'll tell you right now, was created, oh, about 100 years ago for all the wrong reasons. It was a law that was created in order to try to get the then heavyweight champion of the world, who was Black, Jack Johnson. And Jack Johnson, the loves of his life were women who were white. And they loved him. But white America couldn't take that mostly because he could, he was that good and was not getting beaten in the ring. So he created the Mann Act, which is also known as the Jack Johnson Law, if you Google it, which is pretty much it is illegal to transfer women over state lines for immoral purposes. Well, it remained on the books. Today it was used for a good reason. They got R. Kelly with it, created for a bad reason, but today used for a good reason. Uh, and he still has plenty of more charges coming up. He's got a lot of other things between federal and state, including child pornography, whatever else they're going to get him for, and who knows what else. So this guy, if you tease a little young, he's about 54, whatever he is, some early 50s. Yeah, if you told me he was going away for life, yeah, he's 54. I'd believe you. And a lot of a lot of incredibly talented people in music who were as sick as you can get. Rick James had his own stuff going on. Ike Turner, we all know about. It's incredible. But unfortunately, it is the way it is. So yeah, R. Kelly 
the guilty verdicts have begun to come in. And even if somewhere along the line, one or two of the charges are found to be not guilty, whatever it may be, he's going to have so many other guilty verdicts coming in. They are going to be locking him away for who knows how long, if he gets out at all. And good, I say keep him in there. There's no someone like that. You cannot rehabilitate him. I don't believe it anyway. I'm hoping everybody's week was good. We had that one rain last week, but the weather itself really has been perfect. Hopefully you've all been out and about getting the breeze. I have. I've been the happiest in a while. I get to one, this, one thing I get to do now on a nice breezy day is drink my coffee hot. Because where I live, every iced coffee costs almost five bucks a cup. Now, everybody, you know, has a thing they hate spending money on. We covered this last week. Before. Um, there's always like a little something. For me, for me, it's the charge of iced coffee. I buy it, but whew, it, it kills me. So anyway, I'm glad I'm going back to hot. I'm saving half my money. Um. You know those, those forest fires you're getting in um, California? Uh, this is this article I saw in the, in, the, in the... I get a lot of my stuff from the New York Post because they pick up everybody's news feed. So I get a story. Oh, they're not breaking the news, but, you know, for the most part. But they do pick up a lot of other feeds. I'm happy about that. So it was known as the Fawn Fire. California's bonfire. The headline reads, shaman charged with starting California wildfire after allegedly boiling bear human, like a grizzly bear, bear urine. And it says a California shaman charged with starting a wildfire that is threatening thousands of homes claimed it started by accident when she was boiling bear urine to drink. And that's the local news. Okay, Alexandra Suvenmiva, who's 30, drinks what up to not or faces up to nine years in prison for allegedly sparking the fawn fire, which has destroyed 41 homes, 90 smaller other structures, and is threatening 2,340 others. She has pleaded not guilty. And when they searched it, they found CO2 cartridges and some other stuff that can help you start a fire. And because she wants to chug down the bear urine, not quite sure how she got it. They didn't go into that too much. Well, this is what's going on. Because she needed to do a freaky shot. Um, because she wanted, whatever it is she wanted to do, whatever benefit she thinks she's getting, this is what happened. And as we all know, once a little fire goes on in California, it doesn't stop. It claims off. It claims everything. It just becomes a disaster. So there you go. It's not smart to drink the bear urine. I'm telling you people are stupid. They're dumb. Why am I leaning forward? Because here's my microphone. They're dumb. I would much rather talk to dogs and cats. Dogs and cats don't do this stuff. What is this? I don't know if anyone saw in the news yesterday. Oh, man. Hey, someone's out having a good time today. There you go. Uh, so there's a group of people who raided an indoor <laughs> a, a food court at the Staten, a mall in Staten Island. A bunch of people. I don't even know how many. Do I even have a number on how many people it was? They marched into a mall. The Staten Island Food Court, they're going to call it, with the American flag, chanting uh, Joe Biden, chanting USA, USA. One girl is sitting there saying, first, we're going to go here, then we're going to go eat, then we're going to sit down because we, with her whining, droning voice. And this is what people are doing. So pretty much, pretty much, how did I put this? Wait a second. How did I put this on my Facebook page? I want to quote myself. That's often not too easy for me to do, but let me get to it because I do have it. Oh, yes. As I like to put it, I just combined all these other idiots out there who I don't know where they're getting their information from, but I just put it as it's their God-given 
as stated by the Bible in the Middle Testament, human first and fourth amendment, civil right to eat mall food. And as I have a, ter a term or phrase I like to use is, not one of them are ever going to command the enterprise. They're just that dumb. That's right. Let's storm a food court with a giant American flag yelling USA, USA. I guess while you're looking for all you can eat. Pasta? Okay. So that's what's going on. Um, yeah. People, to me, you know, there's nothing new. There's nothing new when I say this. I keep saying it. I'd rather listen to the dog. The dogs and the cats, they seem to know better. You don't see that happening. I don't, you know, I just don't see what people are thinking of. I don't care if you believe in masks or not. We've already covered that subject enough times. But I like it. A couple of hundred people walking in, looking to raid, raid the hot table. Maybe they knew there was free crab claws that day or lobster tails or whatever it is they wanted to get. But they stormed in. Got to get it. Okay. Good luck for them. Good luck to them. Well, maybe I'll storm something one day. I don't know quite what, but maybe I will storm something one day. I got a lot of stupid stories. I've already really read the important stuff. A guy who tried to kill the president is getting out of prison, and R. Kelly is going away. Everything else I have here is pretty much what I always intended on reading. Stuff that makes no sense that is real in a very interesting world of people who do the honest of things, some of them important, but some of them are just what it is. And this one here comes from a couple of days ago that says a Chinese man dies after chugging 1.5 liters of Coca-Cola in 10 minutes. Something, his stomach inflated, da, 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 and he died. I have in the past drank that much Coca-Cola in 10 minutes. Ten, you're not just, I mean, if he's chugging all at one time, it shouldn't take him 10 minutes. I don't do that, but I don't know, maybe he had some other, they're not sure if he had any, any other condition, but this guy chugged, died from Coca-Cola in 10 minutes. Last week, I read you about the woman who bought a burger and was chewing on a fingertip. This guy here chugged Coca-Cola and found a way to uh, blow himself to death. I'm telling you, stay away from the cheap stuff. Uh, well, maybe they can go with the people who are storming the mall. Get everything over there. And how was your week? Does anybody have a story to tell me? My emails are open, upfrontfrank at gmail.com. Um, I wish we had a phone going on, but then I would have to laugh at all this stuff with you on the phone. And I don't want to laugh at you on the phone. So you can email me. What can I say? Or leave a message on one of the Facebook pages. I told you that one. Sky's Crescent Radio or up front with Frank Rothstein's page. Um, in a more health-related issue, since we're talking about people with mass storming malls, it turns out, and I got this from, where was it, from Reuters. So, yes, it is a reputable news agency that, vaccinated pregnant women pass protective antibodies on to babies. Well, that is not surprising because pregnant women pass antibody or protection on to their antibodies on to babies in general. So I guess any antibody they would have would go to the baby. Matter of fact, the baby's immune system is last because of the mother's protection for roughly six months after birth. So yes, Moms, don't be afraid. Shoot up. Protect you. Protect the kid. And see what happens. Okay? That's what's going on there. It is 516 New York time. Not sure why I always tell the time, but I guess it's more for me than it is for you. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I had a choke on that one. All this stuff I'm reading. Iced coffee. Wish it was stronger. Again, nearly five bucks a cup. Someone sent me a donation. I'm going to start a GoFundMe account for my iced coffee fund. I'll put up the number $25 and somebody, because all of you love me out there, will send me $25,000. That is the way, if you notice, when you see whether it's a good cause, a tragic cause, or a decent cause, or a bad cause, somebody puts up one amount of money, and all kinds of numbers past that come in. 
Now, because people want to help, they want to do good, and they see that you've already got the goal, but the money keeps coming in. Well, I'm not quite sure what the ruling is that if somebody asks to say $1,000 and now they start getting $3,000, what they're supposed to do with it. But that's something, at least the GoFundMe uh, campaigns that I've noticed. So anyway, back to what's really going on in the world. In the European, excuse me, the European Union has ruled, or they ruled, yeah, the rules forced USB-C chargers for all phones. The USB-C charger is that wire that comes with like all the Android phones. Uh, not the Apple, not the ones you get with the Apple, that wire, no. Um, if this is really upheld, this is really enforced, then Apple will have to redesign their, their wiring for the European Union because it is in a way sort of a racket, a good way to really get people to spend money if you're Apple. I mean, I'm using an iPhone 11 now. I know it's not the 13. I'm sort of outdated. I know that. But I know my needs for a phone. And at the time, the 12 was coming out. But I'm not worried about the camera and videos. And whatever I take on this phone works just fine. You know, fits in my hand, works fine. Um, but I had so much wiring for all the Samsungs I had and all the other things I had that I didn't throw out the Samsung wiring because I'd probably get another one down the road. But you theoretically have to get rid of it all to buy the Apple wire. Then I give you that one little thing rolled up in a box. So you start buying, at least I start buying extras to keep around, a few extras. But now people are buying extra, spending money again. This is where, this is where a lot of the money is made. Not because of the phone, because of all the extras you got to keep on buying. And so if, they, if Europe wants to make everybody use one charger, one, one wire, hey, what the hell, I'm all for it. I hope they do it here and I'll go back to, being, to, getting, to using all my old cables. I'll give my friends some cables because I got so many of them. They're cheap enough to buy, so I don't want to throw them out. Anyway, that is what's going on. Let me read a bit of this story here. Quickly, it says the aim is to reduce waste by encouraging customers to reuse existing charges, the wires, when buying a new device, as I just said. All smartphones sold in the European Union must have USB-C chargers, and Apple has won such a move with harm innovation. I don't believe it, but okay. The only thing I would hope for is that they... In improve the quality of the charge port on the phone i've owned a few samsung's if you want everything to me everything you buy has a built-in flaw somewhere and for samsung theirs is the charge port i'll give you apple has a much superior charge port for the wiring so anyway let's see what happens with that certainly when i go back to to a, to an android i'll be prepared uh, what else is going on here? Well, of course, people on the internet have to care about something when there's nothing to really care for for 24 hours. So I'm looking at this article, and it says, Jessica Rabbit gets more relevant makeover for some, and some fans are fuming. This is from the, a few days ago, the 22nd. She's, training, she's trading in the, her red dress for a fedora. It says Disneyland is making Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin ride more relevant by promoting Jessica Rabbit from a femme fatale to a detective and the star of, of the show. The, the picture I'm looking at is the cartoon of her in the red dress. And now is the cartoon is in of her in black and white with a fedora, almost like a Lady Dick Tracy type of look, but it's in black and white, you know, little, film while looking like thing with the shadow and the light in the face and all that i think she looks better in the uh, fedora but that's that's it and people are upset about it of course you gotta get upset about something so yeah that's it the internet is fuming well at least they're whining anyway what else is going here's one i did not agree with this is this is from the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union. It strips gendered language from 
the late Ruth Bader Ginsburg's quote about women having abortions. Now, what I'm about to start to talk about is I'm not talking about the right of someone, at least this is not about debating the right to have a woman's right to have an abortion. That's not what I'm talking about. The ACLU, um, I'm not sure why they did it. The original quote read, uh, the decision whether or not to bear a child is central to a woman's life, to, to her well-being and dignity. When government controls the decision for her, she is being treated as less than a fully adult human responsible for her own choices. The adjusted quote is, the decision or not to bear a child is central to a person's life, to their well-being and dignity. When the government controls the decision for people, they are being treated as less than fully adult human, responsible for their choices, their own, excuse me, their own choices. And you got the, that's it. They went to a, a gender, new. everything is gender neutral now. I am not in favor of changing this quote. This is not a matter of, of whether I think about women's rights and what they have the right or not to do. This is a, this is a matter of a quote. This is it. This is what she said. The late justice said this in her way. This is it. I don't like the idea of, cent of censorship and certainly changing the quote so somebody should not be offended by gender recognition. And that I thought was really bad. And certainly I would not, well, I was gonna say change it for Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but no, I wouldn't change anyone's direct quote. If you don't agree with the language, it's perfectly okay. There's nothing wrong with you not agreeing with a word choice, but this is the quote, this is it. And I think it was, it's wrong that anybody would change this. Um, into a lighter side of this of this topic, Marvel Studios. Okay, you're yeah, talking about people who are stupid. Let's go, Marvel Studios. Let me get a little drink of water here for this one. I may need it. Wish it was vodka. <clears throat> Marvel Studios could drop the men from X Men over concerns that the title is not inclusive. The X Men. That is, a, that is a superhero group from the 19, what, 60s, 70s, whenever this was created. Dr. X, the heroes, the X-Men. But now, what? I mean, what, so there was, say, there are some of the more recognizable names in Marvel Cinematic Universe, even if they aren't necessarily part of the MCU itself just yet. But the X-Men are now under criticism from Marvel Studios' new president of physical post-production, VFX, and animation, Victoria Alonzo for having a non-inclusive team moniker. Well, sorry, Victoria, they were the X-Men probably before you were born. Probably before you got, definitely before you got the job. They are the X-Men. Start a new group of superheroes and call them whatever you want. Otherwise, let's just change all the manly titles of, of a hero. It's no longer Batman, it's Batperson. It shouldn't be Batgirl either. Has to work both ways, right? Mm -mm -mm. No, no, it's not Catwoman, it's Cat her. Not even, yeah, Cat, no, not her. That's, 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 that, that's a designation. Cat them, Cat they, Cat people. Well, cat people have been used. Um, no more Spider-Man, Spider-Person. That's, is this, you know what I'm trying to say? This is what it is. Um, I don't know what you do with the Hulk because there's already been a She-Hulk and clearly the Hulk is a male. You know, you, you, Superman, Superboy is gone. Supergirl can't be, what, Super They Them? That's it. And you see the Justice League, you can do what you want, because you can always rotate a hero in and out. That's why, well, sorry, girls, but Wonder Woman is now Wonder Person. Sorry, it has to work both ways. Tell Victoria it has to work both ways. And to me, this is just dumb. This particular story is just dumb. But then I've seen a lot of that lately, you know, the, the, the gender neutral thing, this and that, and it's just... Certain things are just set in stone as it is. What are you going to call X? X then? X then? Does that work? I mean, is really, does that work? 
you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's sorry. It can't work. At least not to me. Marvel can do what they want. I would rather create a new, new characters and give them a title of, well, like the Avengers. Anyone could be an Avenger. Not sure if you remember the Defenders. They had their own set of superheroes, but anybody could be a Defender. The Fantastic Four, that's just four people. You can do what you want with a name like that. So create a name. Create characters. You know, or let existing heroes join this new group. You know, the... I don't know, the power team, what, anything, call it what you want. But to me, this is just isn't working out for me. Sorry, it's not working out for me. The, it's just, uh, be creative. If you want to do something like that, be creative. What else is going on here? Um, okay, we covered this, we covered this. Okay, now here you go again. This is because the people today, you know, the Republican Two movement and all that, and you got to have directors who need to have fans. And this is, says the the director of No Time to Die, the newest James Bond, has called Sean Connery's Bond was basically a rapist. Did you ever see the old James Bonds, Doctor No from Russia with Love, Thunderball, all that stuff? You know. He wanted every woman who was part of the job and all the women would look at him, Mr. Bond, Mr. Bond, before you knew what they were saying. Oh, James. But I never saw anybody running away from him like that. I never saw, I never, it was just the nature of the, of the time of the movies. Now, if you want to be, have, write a new movie with James Bond, who's a little bit more hands off. Okay, great. But there's no reason to call, of all people, the Sean Connery, the, the, the standard of, of, of what James Bond should be is now being called a rapist. Everybody who's ever played this character, and there have been some excellent actors playing this character. Roger Moore had excellent success. I always liked Pierce Brosnan. He had a certain meanness, a viciousness about him. I like Pierce Brosnan in that role. But James Bond pretty much drank incorrectly made martinis, had some great toys to play with, great cars, great, great weapon, great toys. He did anything for king and country or queen and country, so to say. Um, womanizing licensed murderer. That's what James Bond basically is. And in this, in the case of this character, especially early on, if James Bond had to screw his way to the bad guy and get him, that's what he did. But uh, this is, who did this here? Carrie excuse me, it says current James Bond director Carrie Fukunaga has claimed that in, a, in an interview that the iconic 007 played by James Bond was basically a rapist. The new NYU grad noted that the questionable sex scenes in the classic 1960s movies uh, and how he, uh, he was talking about that and how he would update the famous British spy for the Me Too era. Or I mean, people have made fun of James Bond for years. James, let's see. Um, it's yeah, The character itself has always been made fun of. The actors made fun of their own character. We know that already. I like Roger Morris. So what kind of a secret agent is this? Everywhere he goes, everybody knows. Him. Every hotel, they all know. Him. How secret can he be? But everyone knew. Him. So, yeah, again, create a character and be done with it. Just be done with it. So, yeah, there you go. There you go. James Bond. Fletch. <laughs> oh, my. Well, you got a lot out of James Bond and a lot of sex that came out from the women, a lot of sexual suggestion that came out of the women who were in the Bond movies. They recreated one scene with Halle Berry years ago when from, from Dr. No when Ursula Andres walked out of the ocean in her in her bathing suit with her knife, the shell, with this body to look at, and she walked out. If you were watching Goldfinger, no one ever heard of it at a time in the film when one of the main characters introduced themselves, introduced herself to him and said, Hello, my name is Pussy Galore. Um, so please, let's not make this a one-way thing. That they sold the movie. This is how it sold. He was a 
as the characters evolve, they are a product of their time. James Bond was not a rapist. I cannot tell you what the next James Bond will be. Um, I read where Daniel Craig does not agree it should be a woman. Well, I don't think, should James Bond be a woman? Now, I don't know about that. Anyone can be 007. I'll give you that. Because if Bond were to take, to take promotion, retire, or die, somebody would have to become 007. It's just like military. It's what they do. They replace people. So anyone can be 007. But I'm all for creating new characters where the involved actor can thrive on their own and not have the opening credit and say, well, this one, that one, wow, she's playing James Bond now? Look, it's a woman, wow. And the movie goes by and you don't even know if she did a good job or not. So for me, create a character. I'm reading one article where it says, one article that says it's time to revoke Bond's license to kill. That's what he always had, known for his license to kill. Well, they want to get rid of the character. Again, you're in the Me Too movement and all this stuff. And, you know, can't have any of that now. But okay. I do not think that James Bond was a rapist. In the eyes of that character, in the way that character was written, he was simply on the job. Um, what else is going on here? Excuse me, I slurped. What does this say here? What's Gov Governor Hockel? What's she saying? Foreign workers could replace New Yorkers unvaccinated hospital and nursing home staffers. Okay. What's going on there? This is from a few days ago. The nearly 20% of workers at hospitals and nursing homes who refuse to get vaccinated against COVID-19 will be replaced potentially by foreigners once the state's mandate goes into effect next week. And that is what, according to our new governor, Kathy Hochul, and that's what she said last Wednesday. Governor Hochul told reporters in Rochester that she hoped that she hoped that all unvaccinated employees would meet the Monday mandate. That's today. To those who won't, we will be replacing it, or we will be replacing people. And I have, and I have a plan that is going to be announced very shortly. So we're waiting to hear that plan. Now we have identified a whole range of opportunities. We have helped su supplement them. And yeah, well, that's what's going on. That's what's going on. Get vaccinated or get out. Uh, people are trying to use their religious exemption, but I, we, we talked about that, that last week. You know, religious exemptions, that's not going to work. Not sorry, that's not going to work. I think if you're going to, if, if people are requiring masks, and you cannot get a mask or even a vaccine because of medical reasons, you should provide the reason. May not be to the open public, but certainly to your employer and let them know what exactly it is that you can't, why you cannot have this, wear a mask or get this vaccine. Certainly when you see one of these YouTube videos and somebody's screaming and talking and yelling and screaming, I can't have it, it's my health, my health, my health. And certainly it's not their throat or their lungs. So, or even their mouth. So. Let's see how this all works out and how many people really lose their job and how and exactly who takes their job. Oh, speaking of vaccines, if you're in Long Island, McDonald's is offering COVID-19 vaccines. You can even get fries. And this is The owner of the, of, of the McDonald's, Jonah Kaufman, said the offer wasn't, it wasn't an odd thing to do at all. He's trying to come up for, di for different ways to get employees vaccinated. So he's providing it. Kaufman has 700 employees at 11 McDonald's locations throughout Long Island, and he would love to get as many of them vaccinated as possible. And he's trying to keep his staff and trying, just trying. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what happens. As I'm reading this, um, Long Island recently saw a, a thousand new case COVID, uh, COVID increase in the 24 hour span. So this owner can afford it. I think it's generous. And if I think if the employees are smart, since they're behind the counter and people are breathing on them all day long, I think they should get vaccinated. At least I think so. 
that's, a, that's just me. Certainly these little cheap plastic panels that look like the bat shield from the old Batman TV show are not going to help anybody. Anyway. What else? What else? What else? Oh, I keep reading these odd, stupid stories. Oh, here it is. This is a good one here. This is pretty good. Uh, the MTA has announced to be prepared to pay $50 for not wearing a mask on the subway. It says if the slew, slew of celebrities voices reminding you to stay socially distant and mask up while riding the public hasn't convinced you to keep your face covered, this $50 fine might. And that means, just like I said, it, if the police see you, if anyone there sees you, police see you, or if, unless they open up a special force to, to look for this and, and find people from the NTA, um, if you are caught without a mask on, it will be a $50 fine. And that does not read as you can get one fine per day, no matter how many times they catch you. And I'm just saying $50 fine. So if they catch you six times in a day, that's 300 out of your pocket. So yeah, that's a lot going on this week. I got to tell you, I really got to tell you. I was watching boxing. I was watching this fight. We have a new heavyweight champion in the world. Anthony Joshua from England lost his title to the former undisputed cruiserweight champion, Alexander Usyk from the Ukraine. I was watching that fight. I was watching the fight two fights ago when Anthony Joshua lost his title the first time to Andy Ruiz Jr. And it started out where he knocked Andy Ruiz down, who immediately got up and knocked Anthony Joshua down and then proceeded over the next round or two to knock him down a few more times until he, until Joshua sort of just vacant died, stopped, and the referee stopped the fight. I watched his last fight where he won, and now he's fighting again. And the first thing the cruiserweight champ did, who put on a few pounds, like 20 pounds, now he's a big 6'3 guy, punched the champ in the face, who became tentative after that. Never pressed the action, never did the thing. Um... I remember the phrase I heard for people like this. He has a case of the yips. You know what the yips are? It's when you're scared to do something. Something happened beforehand and you're scared to do it again. Uh, it might it may happen to you again. Because the second he got punched, he backed off. And it's not like the former champ takes a great punch anyway. But it's clear that once he took the first punch in the face, he was never going to try to impose his size advantage and go after this guy. And he wound up losing his title. So we have a new heavyweight champion. And I'll tell you, I remember when if you were the heavyweight champion of the world, that was the biggest title in professional sports. Yeah, being a World Series champion, being a, a Super Bowl champion was pretty big. Any, any sports league you're in, winning Wimbledon, pretty big. But being the heavyweight champion, Oh, that was the biggest of all at one time. That sort of has changed. Because there are good fighters, but there are not many good champions. That's a whole, you don't have to be a great fighter to be a great champion. And that's what you're not seeing. Um, and yeah, that's what's going on. That's how I see it anyway. It's been an interesting week. I'm still doing the uh, sugar thing, the battle. The, got my numbers going down. Drop a pound or two here and there. I may fit into my one camera shot now, sooner or later. Um, I got my eye on one jacket. Maybe I'll bring it out next week and show it to you. I have to really. I haven't worn it in years. It's covered in dust. So I got to take it out and do a job on it. And um, I'm happy with it. Seeing where I'm going, seeing what, what size I could drop. You know, trying to get my shirt to not look like a tic-tac-toe game. But, you know, doing the best we can. Certainly I'm, certainly I'm not eating the way I was. And I don't think anyone has ever seen how I can eat. Especially, well, not if I'm alone. Not going to see it. But I could do so. I could feed a town sometimes, a small town. I'm looking at Jade. She's looking at something on her computer. Maybe she's having a Star Trek fantasy and like looking how to blow up a, a ship. I don't know. She because she the background, she's in space and Earth is behind her. She may be defending the planet as we speak. 
Phase is on stun, kid. And everything is going along well. Everything else has been going good. Still got my, still cleaning up and tending to my flashlights and doing my social media stuff here and there. I get a kick out of the people on other social media apps who are just there to get your money, where they all want you to gift them. <laughs> all you hear is people from other countries saying, support me, gift me. Um, I am the broadcaster. You are the gifter. Send me money. Send me money. And I laugh at all that. I say hello to a few, but I laugh at all that. But normally I still go on. I look for new music. I may not be playing music out here too much anymore. I mean, occasionally, if there's a reason, I'll have a song going out. But other than that, I am looking for new music at all times to listen to. I'm happy that Playing for Change has come out with some new stuff. Go to YouTube. Go for playing, see Playing with Change, or Playing for Change. Postmodern Jukebox has started up again. Yeah, there are people making music. Certainly my favorite band, the Mavericks, are out there. Um, nobody's irreplaceable. That's why ZZ Top is back on the road after Dusty Hill passed. Um, and they just took their tech for 30 years, Elwood, and he is now their bass player. Turns out he was growing all his whiskers out during the pandemic when no one saw him. So he has an official ZZ Top beard. It's, it's in length. So yes, there is new, new music to find. Go find our old friend, Natalie Gelman. She's releasing an album soon. She has videos coming out on YouTube. Of course, some of the people I respect the most on YouTube, Raina Del Cid and her friend, Tony Lindgren. They have some great music. They have some good music coming out. Great music, great. They have their acts are on the road. Sometimes there's a delay, sometimes there's not. They just recently did a video in Alaska one of their Sunday videos in Alaska. I don't know why, what's going on up there, but that's where they were. And uh, John Fogarty, who I always like enjoy music with, he's uh, on the road here and there. As I said, Jade's on the road around, around the city. There's five boroughs to find train walkers. Get a few more. They're going to be playing in all five boroughs at one time. But again, this week, on the first Friday of every month, you'll find them at Arlene's Grocery at 7 o'clock, 95 Staten Street, Go on in, buy a drink, easy ticket to get. You'll have a good time. I think they have 10 people walking this time. Plus there's, a, a, what you say, about seven guests. She's not telling me who they are. I got to buy a ticket. I got to buy it. Look, I got to buy a ticket. Look at this. Look at this. This is my friend doing. Imagine what she tells a stranger. I got to buy a ticket. Okay. Maybe I will. I want to see how they get 17 people on a, on a six-person stage. I got to see this. This is a lot of fun. Because Arlene's, Arlene's Grocery is a pretty cool spot. You go in, there's the bar on the front. You go near the end of the back end of the room. There's whoever it is at the podium taking your money. You go in, there's a small bar in the back in the stage area. And it's a pretty cool spot. They have good sound and all that. So I've seen some acts there along the way. Yeah, definitely well worth going to. And then that is everything that's going on. Well, I'm... I'm it's early today. It is early. Well, I'll be heading out to Brooklyn soon. Going to go do the family thing. Got to put in the minutes. <coughs> Seeing what's going on in the old neighborhood. I really, I come, excuse me. I really, I come from the Brighton Beach, Coney Island area originally. Um, and that, it's a little area that was known as West Brighton. It sort of is in the middle of where Coney Island starts and where Brighton Beach ends. It's not a very big area, but that's where it is. That's pretty much, I'm like a, my block is a border block. Let's put it that way. So you can say I'm from two places, West Brighton and Coney Island. So, okay, I got, I got several addresses. I can say I'm, whoever I want to impress, I can, I can use any address I want. Um, when I talk to people who are from Russia who don't know me, I tell them I'm from Brighton Beach, Brooklyn. They believe me. Well, why not? I'm close enough. If I want to make it sound important, I tell everybody I'm from West Brighton. For the people who think it's cool, I, I, if I think they're going to think it's impressive, I tell them I'm from Coney Island, and everyone knows where that is. So that's just what I do. I can tell anybody anything. That's how much bullshit I spread. <laughs> so. And everything else is going good today. Everything else is going good. I'm feeling good. Hopefully you're feeling good. Hopefully everyone is getting by. If there's, if your kids are out in school, I hope they're all having fun in school. Hope they don't bring home the usual fluid. Don't forget the flu season is starting. So 
Uh, it will be, as I said last week, I think a very confusing flu season. Because last year we really didn't have a flu season because everybody was home for the most part. Nobody was at work at this time of year. Everybody was working from home. So there was less walking around, less eating lunch out, less train riding, less a lot of things. And people weren't breathing on you and sneezing on you as always. This year, mask or no, people will be near each other. And yeah, people get each other sick. So be careful. And just because someone coughs or sneezes does not mean they have COVID. Don't panic. It's not that bad. So we'll see what happens. But I really do think that A, I believe everyone should get vaccinated, and B, I think the X-Men should keep their title. And don't go changing the title of Superman. And listen, he has that little, you see me on the video here? You see, he has a little, let me move my hair away. That little Superman curl that he gets. You've seen it in the, in the movies and the comics. Don't go cutting off his curl. He's got it for a reason. These are the things that matter to me, people. This is what matters to me. That, and they're going to start giving out new flavors to Oreos again. I could see it now. The Halloween Oreo is coming out. The candy corn Oreo. I don't like that. I'm an Oreo purist. I keep saying it to people. It makes me want to rub the, the twitching in my eye. All I want to know about Oreos is that you can dunk them. That's what matters to me in my life. And pretty much, well, unfortunately, the Mets have been written out of the, uh, as far as I know, they're at the end of the baseball season. So for the, if you're a New York fan, you got the Yankees, who are still battling for the wild card. Uh, if you're a fan of football, well, the New York Jets, you can start playing taps for them now. They're 0-3. I can't believe they can put three straight games together under any condition. So as far as I can see, their 16-game season is dead now. Get another team, people. I don't know how Buffalo's doing, but it's still New York. Get another team. It's really bad. With historically, the only team that has really been to have any kind of consistency in success is the New York Yankees. The Islanders rotate. The Nets are doing okay over the last few years. The Knicks, maybe they'll have a shot at something this year. But generally speaking, what I remember as a kid, when the fans in the in Madison Square Garden wear like the old grocery shop, grocery paper bags, they put bags over their heads, like the unknown fan and holes and nose so they could breathe. And that's what they did to the Knicks because they were just that bad. Nobody likes it when their team is bad. Then again, I was watching football. Tampa Bay Buccaneers were playing. I couldn't believe for a couple of seconds that I think the fans were booing Tom Brady or something, the pucks or something. They just, they just won a Super Bowl. So fans are tricky fans don't care if you, about you they want to know that you're winning fans are actually really rooting for a jersey i don't think people understand they're rooting for a jersey because if their favorite player is traded away tomorrow and somebody else comes in that they normally couldn't stand all of a sudden they're cheering for it so fans are really rooting for a jersey i root for the mets i root for the knicks if I got to watch hockey, I will root for the Rangers, but I don't care who's on the teams. I'll just root for these, for my teams. And that's how it goes. And there's 10 minutes to go. And before we sign out, Jay, do you have anything you want to add or talk about your bandwidth? Are you good? Or you want to chirp in? No, Jay, I think I covered it all. So yes, if you want to talk to Jade, she will answer. She does type. Um, write to her at jadezabrick at gmail.com. She'll tell you whatever you need to know about her or her music. Uh, if you want to try this yourself, well, sometimes you're on, sometimes you're off, you know, off your game. But write to us at skyscrescentradio at gmail.com. Somebody will get to you pretty quick and tell you what's involved. If you'd like to try your own show, I highly suggest you do. You don't have to make a career out of it. You can simply try it once or twice and see if you like it and let your friends hear you and say you did something new for the first time. If nothing else, it'll cost you a couple of dollars and you'll say, I have a new story to tell, which is more important than the couple of dollars. Um, please don't go raiding food courts, demanding your rights. Really, all you want is like free pasta or a burger. And again, I keep telling people, go and get vaccinated. That's, I can't make you do it. I'm not saying it because 
I believe it's going to save every last person in the world. I will say that it's not going to hurt you. At least I don't think it's going to hurt you. I haven't known anyone. I knew one person who had, I shouldn't say anyone. I knew one person who had a bad reaction to a vaccine. And I know a lot of people. So, and no, the news reports, no, hundreds of thousands have not been sick or died from it. No. Not, not died from it, no. A lot of people have reactions. That can happen, but they haven't died. Not all of them have died from it, no. It's not exactly accurate. You can Google that number anytime you want. Uh, so that's the story. It is 5.52. I think I'm going to do it early tonight as opposed to rambling on for a lot longer, which isn't always necessary. Um, but I do like to try to get as close to the hour as I can. Anyway, I'm heading to Brooklyn. Maybe I'll bring back some Nathans for all of you next week. or We'll have some hot dogs and fries together, which, by the way, it's not cheap food anymore over at Nathan's. You get a couple of hot dogs and order a fries and a Coke, and you spend about 20 bucks. That's really odd at Nathan's. Okay, everyone, have a good night. I will see all of you next week. And please tune in. I will, I will have all kinds of new crazy stories to read and hopefully something useful to tell you about. I'll see what the world provides. Have a good night, gang. I'll see everybody. Bye.